Right, uh, sitting here with uh, Lusanda Kamenisi ahead of his fight against uh, Senator Mabam. 13, I think he's, what is he, how many wins is he? 13 and 1. He's 13 and 1, it's a credible opponent that you are coming up. Uh, how do you feel about that fight? Oh, um, first of all, thank you for having me, Aiden. I'm, I'm, I'm happy, you know, I'm happy because uh, me and my team struggled to make this fight happen. You know, we weren't getting any lightweights. Most of the guys were committed and Munye was already committed for his defense. And then Bam stepped up and said, no, I can take it, you know, and um, I'm grateful him and his team took the fight. Now it's going to happen. You both former featherweight boxers, so you both campaigned in the division in and around the same time. Um, how do you feel at lightweight you each will compare? Uh, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting because uh, it's, it's a big fight for him. He hasn't been active for f in, in four years. You know, I think he's been off the ring for four years and... Um, and he feels like he wants to move up to the bigger boys and fight in the lightweight division. You know? and, and, and I respect that. You know, I respect that. Maybe he's got something we don't know. Maybe he's got something new. He's going to surprise us on fight night. But uh, I'm happy it's going to happen at lightweight because I'm more comfortable here. I feel like, I feel like I'm the boss. Well, I'm going to wait for the buzzer to go quickly. Right, so after the buzzer, let's go again. Uh, so uh, the one guy that he has lost to is Lorato Glamini. Have you spoken to Lorato about the opponent? Actually, uh, my, Lorato is one of my main sparring partners, you know, and we knew about this fight uh, before, before it was even made. You know, I was already sparring with Lorato already. I was already planning somebody else. And then when Pam, Pam's name came up, we didn't stop sparring. We are still preparing for him and... Yeah, it's it's quite interesting that he has fought Lerato and I'm sparring Lerato now. And but this is boxing, you know. Sparring don't mean anything compared to the fighting, and you can't compare fighting with what happens in the actual ring in boxing. You know, you can look good in sparring, look bad in the fight. You know, this is boxing; it's full of surprises. If you look at the way he lost that fight, I mean, you would obviously want to know how to get get, a, get an edge on your opponent. Lerato Glamini won the knockout of the year from that knockout do you plan on knocking him out uh i don't plan on knocking him out i don't plan on knocking him out but i believe my hard work you know everything we've been doing is gonna overwhelm him i'm gonna i'm gonna walk over him i'm gonna put him in the ring if he decides to quit that's his problem but uh, i'm not planning to knock him out i'm planning to go out there and display my boxing because i've been learning new things as well in the gym so i can't wait to try them yeah, he lost that fight. I watched it like two times already, and it, it was a good knockout for Lerato, but uh, mine is going to be different. Mine's going to be different, I can put it that way. So, I mean, what, what sort of threats does he pose that you've seen? Like, obvious threats. I'm not saying game plan-wise, giving anything away, but what sort of obvious threats does he pose? He likes faking and exchanging punches because he believes in his power or something like that, but uh, this is the lightweight. You know, it's not going to be the same as the featherweight. Maybe in the featherweights, you, you could have faked them and hit them with power shots. This is the lightweight. He's going to need more than one big shot. If he's planning for one big shot, he's going to need 10. If he's planning 10, he's going to need 100. I'm, I'm bringing in something he's never seen before. You know, they've never seen me box. They've never seen me play and display my skills. They just know me of being a knockout specialist and stuff like that. But that's, that's not all I can do. There's more. There's more I'm, I'm practicing. And there's more I'm learning every day. Well, you're learning a lot more. You're getting better. So far, so good uh, in the lightweight division. We're, the clip that I filmed the other day between you and Nomeba, where he says he's, he's, he's no longer a lightweight, and you're saying, well, at lightweights. Can you talk to us about what happened? Well, no, uh, actually, Nomeba came for sparring that day. I didn't know. We didn't know, actually. He came in for sparring, and he was sparring on the other ring. I was sparring on the other ring. And then my sparring was interesting. Every time the round goes, I look at his sparring and it was interesting. And then he said, oh, I can still get it on and stuff like that. And, and it's actually quite interesting for me as well, you know, because uh, for guys like Nomeva has done a lot, you know, for guys like Nomeva to, to, to look at me and still see me as a worthy opponent, that motivates me a lot. You know, it motivates me a lot. We were going to fight. We could have fought maybe back two, three years before the pandemic. You know, but, uh, you know, 
new things every day, new things every day. And I'm ever moving up to a bigger weight class, I'm fighting at the lightweight division. It's not gonna happen. Well, let's talk about an interview I did yesterday, actually. Uh, that thing's very loud, sorry. I want to talk about an interview I did yesterday uh, with uh, Chifio Munyai where he said, okay, Numeva's uh, gone up in weight division, he wanted that fight, that's the fight that he wanted, but now he wants you. What is your thoughts on that? Oh, yeah, I saw that interview, you know. You know, I've got lots of respect for Munyai. Munyai has got more experience than me, he's been in the game longer than me, and he's done a lot more than I did, you know. But to see my name matched up with his name, that also motivates me, you know, that also gives me hope that, hey, man, I'm still going to be a champion again. I'm still, you know, being mentioned with other champions. But fighting Munya would be a, a, a good fight. It would be a good fight because I've never fought anyone like Munya. I've never fought anyone like Munya. Munya is skillful. He's taller. He's got speed and he's got reflexes and all that. Looking at myself and then looking at Munya, um, He's, he's, he's one or two steps ahead of me, especially after his win, his last win in the USA titles. Motivated now, but uh, I'm also motivated. My last fight was winning a title too. I won a belt too. So if we are to meet at lightweight, I'm sure it's going to be SA and ABU on the line. I'm also motivated. I won that SA title because my promoter told me that if we get that SA title, he's got another thing coming for me. You know, I've got dates lined up. We might change those and make him bigger. Um, I'm looking for a So basically, that's it. You wanna, you plan on winning this fight on the 13th, and then you want to challenge Shafir Munyai. Yes, we've already um, sent the challenge form to PSA that uh, after his mandatory, you know, we'd like to fight Munyai and take him down to East London. And actually, it's not up to us. You know, he's got a promoter. I've got a promoter. If his promoter decides to do the fight, then we'll, we'll go. We'll go their side. If my promoter decides to do the fight, they'll come my side. But uh, we're looking forward to fighting. Him. I'm looking forward to fighting Munyai. Does that motivate you when you're fighting your current opponents? Obviously, no disrespect. He's a good fighter in his own right. Does it motivate you knowing that there's things waiting for you? You know, um, since we started preparing for this fight, I've been looking at Bam. I've been looking at what he does what he can't do in the ring and, and in looking at his loss against Lerato, I've been studying him. And then when the Munyai fight came in, it's not that I'm overlooking Bam mm -hmm. and thinking about Munyai. It's just that I'm setting the bar high for myself because I need to go a little bit higher as well. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing myself winning the fight against Bam and I'm seeing myself taking the essay from Munyai. You know, that's just how I feel. That's, not, that's my belief and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go after it. And what happened with the, there was a, you were, at one stage you were going to go to Russia to fight and that moved, collapsed, what happened there? Well, actually the fight in Russia was, was in negotiations and then uh, we had problems with the, with, with the, um, the pass, you know, the, we, we, did, we weren't happy with the pass they were giving us. And then we said we're going to wait for them to decide what they're going to do because that pass was too low. Uh, they came back and then they've already had a different opponent. It was in, it's, I think it's the fight where um, Kuwait Sevilla fought. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Right. I think it's that fight. Yeah, it's that fight where yeah. he was going to... There's a few South Africans on that tournament. So. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think Longa Stimera was also fighting there. Um, we weren't happy with the pass. Uh, and then they came back to us and I was already committed. And now, now that I'm planning to fight them, we also got another call from the same promoter in Russia again, uh, wanting us to go there and fight by the junior lightweight, which I'm, 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 I don't have a pro any okay. problem. I'm walking around 63. I'm resting around 64. So fighting at 58, 59 won't be a problem for me. And um, I but believe I can, I can do something. I can do a good job as well. But does that not spoil your plans at lightweight here in South Africa? Uh, you know, any fight that comes first, is a fight that matters more than the fight that we talk about. You know, some fights we talk about and then they end up word of mouth. They don't happen. You know, some fights do come, we ignore, and then we believe that something is going to happen. Nothing happens. You know, these boxers sitting down three years, four years inactive right now. 
waiting for fights to happen. So if that fight comes now, I'm not going to jump that opportunity. I'm going to grab it because I know there's no chances now, especially in South Africa. There's no fights. There's no opportunities. Anything comes my way, I'm going to sweep it. I'm sweeping it. Right, and, uh, what, if you have a message for, for, for Bam, what would it be? Um, well, you better be strong. You better be ready. That's all. You better be strong. You better be ready. And good luck. Good luck. Yes. And then uh, just lastly from you, do you have a thank you or a shout out to anybody? Um, I'm thankful to all my sponsorships. I'm thankful to ISF uh, Group. I'm thankful to uh, Bongles Accountants and Tax Consultants. Uh, I'm thankful to Black Magic Group. Uh, I'm thankful to TMA Manufacturing, all my sponsorships as well. Uh, all together and I'm thankful to my trainer Wusim Jolo who's been down up and down with me he never backs down he's always there looking after my training looking after me pushing me you know calling me every now and then let's do this let's do this let's go there let's spar those guys let's do this and I can see um, what he wants he keeps telling me he wants to see a world champion he can see a world champion in me so I'm not going to disappoint him I'm going to get there